as we approach the Passion Week and the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, we want to focus our attention today and our meditations and thoughts on the prayers of our Savior. Our text is in the 17th chapter of John's Gospel, John 17, and there we begin to see the prayer of the Lord Jesus. Some call it His high priestly prayer. This took place before He went to the cross. In verses 1 to 5, we see He prays for Himself. Verse 1, These words spake Jesus and lifted up His eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify Thy Son, that Thy Son also may glorify Thee. He prayed for Himself in the will of God as He finished the mission that He was sent to do and that would end in glory. He prayed that the Father would be glorified. After all, it was the Father who originated the plan of our salvation. Now notice in verses 2 and 3, As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Eternal life comes from knowing God personally. To know God is to share eternal life. God has eternal life. And we come, when we come to know Him as our personal Savior by being born again, we receive the very nature of God put into us and we become His sons. And we have eternal life because God has eternal life and we have His nature in us after we're born again. And this is the record John wrote in 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. And this is the record that God hath given unto us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Do you have eternal life? Because you've trusted the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as your personal Savior from sin. This life comes by being born again. So he prayed for himself. Like the Lord Jesus, you and I have a plan to follow. We have a race to run, a path to follow. Paul said, let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. The Lord Jesus show us, showed us, He pioneered the path for you and me, and we can follow Him by faith and finish our course with joy as well. Proverbs says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. God has a plan for your life. He has a purpose for your life. And you and I need to find that plan and follow it as Jesus did in His life. He prayed for himself, but he also prayed for his followers. In verses 6 to 19 is a section of this prayer that deals with the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 6, we see that they are gifts from the Father. I have magnified thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. The believer is God the Father's gift to His Son. They became that, and uh, this transpired in their lives when they believed His Word. Verse 6, again, the last part. Thine they were, and Thou gavest them Me, and they have kept Thy Word. Verse 8, For I have given unto them the words which Thou gavest Me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and that ye have believed, or and they have believed, that thou didst send me. Verse 9, I pray for them. He prayed for them, and they believed his word. As we believe the word of God, the truth of God's word about Jesus, we become children of God by faith in him, 
and we are the gifts of the Father unto the Son. He prayed for those ones who believed His Word. Because they believed His Word, they were taken out of this world in the sense that they were no longer a part of it. They received a new nature. Therefore, they needed to be guarded from the world and the evil one, Satan himself, also called the God of this world. So in verses 14 and 15, we're not surprised to hear the Lord Jesus say, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou shouldst keep them, guard them from the evil. We need to be guarded, protected from the evil that is in the world. The world system itself that is opposed to God and all that belongs to God. And also Satan, Peter calls him your adversary, the devil. In verses 16 and 17, he says, They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify means to set apart. Positionally, we were set apart at our salvation. God set us apart as a gift for His Son. He set us apart and made us distinct. Because we've been set apart, we were set apart for a special person. That person is the Lord Jesus Christ. As we said, we are gifts of the Father to the Son. We are also set apart for a special purpose, and that purpose is to bring glory to God. So positionally, we have been sanctified. But practically, in the day-to-day -day living out of our Christian life, we are being sanctified by the Spirit and the Word. He's making us more and more and more set apart, more and more like Christ Himself. It is the Spirit and the Word of God that is producing Christ-likeness in you and me. Thus we are being sanctified. We've seen that Jesus prayed for Himself. We've seen that He has prayed for His followers. And now we hear Him praying for His yet future church. His yet future church. Verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, through the preaching of the apostles, the founding of the church in the book of Acts, the word of God would go out around the world and people would be saved and are still being saved to this very day, thank the Lord. Verse 22, And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. God's glory in us, it has been given to us, it will be revealed one day. And as individuals, we are distinct, we're different from one another. There are no two Christians exactly alike, and this is exactly what the Lord intended. But on the other side of the coin, the divine nature in us is producing a single image, a single likeness, and that is the likeness of Christ Himself. The more Christ-like we become, the more unity we enjoy. We have unity, not uniformity. We maintain our personalities, we maintain our distinctness, because no, no two of us is alike, and God does not want us to be a carbon copy of anyone. But at the same time, as we become more like our blessed Savior, we enjoy not uniformity, but unity in the body of Christ. So he prayed for his body to have unity. He prayed that they would also see his glory. Verse 24. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am. That is in heaven. He's going, to, going back to heaven. He says, I want them to be with me there. 
that they may behold my glory, the glory that he laid aside when he came to earth, as well as the glory he gained while he was here on earth, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. He's praying for them to see his glory. Now, how is that possible? He's already said he didn't want us taken out of the world. And he's praying now that we would see him and be with him in glory. Well, we understand there are two things operating here. Paul explains one of those in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. There he writes, But we all with open face, unveiled face, uh, beholding the image of God, but we all with open face, as we behold the image of God written in the Word of God, beholding as in a glass, a mirror, the glory of God, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. We all with open face, Beholding is in a glass, a mirror, the glory of God. We see the glory of God through the Word of God. The Spirit of God reveals the glory of God through the Word of God. And when we see the glory of the Lord Jesus in His Word, that same Holy Spirit changes us more and more into the image of Christ from glory to glory. In other words, the glory within us is enhanced, it grows as we become more Christ-like. And we become more Christ-like as we see the Lord through His Word. So we can see Him, we can become more like Him, we can reveal more of His glory through a surrender to the Holy Spirit's teachings in the Word of God. But there's another aspect of this. In 1 John chapter 3, uh, he says to us in verse 2, We know that when He, Jesus, shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. At the rapture of the church, you and I will see the glorified Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we see Him in His glory, we will be made like Him. We see Him in His glory in His Word, and we see Him in His glory at the rapture. And as we see Him, and as we are with Him, we will be made like Him. Uh, Paul wrote in Philippians that we will, our bodies will be changed uh, and fashioned like unto His glorious body. Paul wrote to the, to the Thessalonians in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10, his glory will be revealed through us uh, when He will come to be glorified in His saints. The glory of God that's in us, that glory that's growing and, and presenting itself in a stronger fashion as we become more Christ-like, will shine through when we get our new bodies, our glorified bodies, Philippians 3, 21. And when we come back with Him at the end of the tribulation, we will return in our glorified bodies, revealing His glory, and He will be glorified in His saints. All this is future, and it's something Jesus is praying for in this prayer. Finally, we see the Lord Jesus praying for His church that they would share in the Father's love. The last two verses of John 17 say, O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them." He's praying that we would share in the Father's love. Back in 1 John chapter 3, in the first verse, it says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Behold, look what manner of love 
that we should be called the sons of God. There are two words used for sons in the New Testament. One is huios, and it means to have the positions and the privileges of a son in the family of God. And we have that, and we're called sons of God, huios. There's another word used for sons, and that word is tekna, and this means to have the father's nature, to have the father's nature, to be a son of God having the Father's own nature. This is the word that is used in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. We should be called the sons of God, those having the nature of the Father in us. The nature of the Father in us is allowing us to enjoy and to share the love of God in our hearts. The love of God is shed abroad, poured out in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. God's love is poured out within us. It's not something we work up. It's not something we pray down. It's something the Holy Spirit gives us in our nature, our God-like God nature, responds to this kind of love and gives out this kind of love to a world around us. God will do it if you will surrender to Him. God will give you that kind of love. Perhaps there, today there are people that you hate and despise, people against whom you are bitter. Well, God can fix that if you'll surrender to Him. Don't try to get better. Don't try to be better. Surrender to God, surrender to His will, and He will take away the bitterness and He will cause His love to shine forth in your heart and in your life. He prayed that they would share the Father's love. In closing, do you have, truly have, eternal life, the Father's life in you because you know the Father? You've been born again. You're His child by the new birth and you have His nature residing in you. If not, turn to Him today and say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I realize that only Jesus is, can save me and He's paid the price for my sin and I believe He will save me because you promised that He would if I would trust Him. And so now I call upon you to save me I'm trusting Jesus, not myself. I'm trusting Jesus to take my sins away. If you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, let me say to you, rejoice. Jesus has prayed for you, and Jesus is right now praying for you. Paul wrote in Romans 8, 34, that Christ maketh intercession for us. He's doing so at this very moment. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Father, seal these truths in our hearts today and produce the image of your Son in us to the glory of God. Amen.